Good morning, YouTube, and welcome back to Fern Valley Farms YouTube channel. We're on this channel, we're pure country. What I'm building today, I'm getting ready for spring. It's only two days after Christmas, but I'm getting ready for spring. I'm building ventilation boxes. Stay tuned. Alrighty, welcome back, YouTube, to Fern Valley Farms YouTube channel. Now we're on this channel, we are pure country. Anywhere from animals, the recipes, the beekeeping, anything country, anything rural. What I'm doing today is I'm getting ready for spring. <clears throat> I got I got uh, a bunch of splits I'm going to make in the spring, and I'm making ventilation boxes. Remember when it was like 100 degrees out a few months ago, and now it's like really cold? Well, it depends on where you live. Where I live, northern Illinois, it gets pretty cold this time of year. Actually, today it's not bad. It's raining, and it's like 45 degrees, so it's a mess. <laughs> but it's going to get cold. January is coming. February is coming. So we're thinking spring here. I am building ventilation boxes. I put these on my hives last spring, um, or last summer, I should say, when it was really hot. You, know, you got your two deeps. Um, I put this on top of the deep, and then my super went on top of that, the other super, whatever, however I went. But I put these right on top of my deeps. Um, just think about 10,000 bees crammed into those boxes. It's 100 degrees out. It'd be like you shoved into an apartment with about a hundred of your friends, and your apartment is this big, and it's 98 degrees, no air conditioning, right? But at least this gives a little bit more airflow, a little bit, just a little bit more air to circulate, um, let some of the heat escape. What I do, and I'm actually going to tweak this a little bit. Um, I built this with these holes down, so if I want to turn this over and use this and put my and put my roof down over it, would cover these holes up. If I wanted, to, if I wanted to just use it for a little bit more space, um, I could put my roof on it, and my roof would actually cover those holes. But I never wound up doing that this year, and obviously this winter, I, uh, I'm not doing that. I actually have uh, screen, screen candy boards I built. There's a video on that. Go check that out. And my insulated covers, <clears throat> so I won't be doing what I thought I was going to maybe do. So I'm going to tweak this just a little bit. Instead of putting these holes so low, I'm going to center them. And I'm probably going to go three holes. Um, I've got two on each side. Uh, I'm going to go three, actually. One, two, and three. And on the inside of this, you can kind of see it on the video, uh, right here, there's number eight hardware claw stapled on the inside. So obviously no robbing can, you know, nothing can get in from the outside, no hornets or yellow jackets, because they were a real pain in the ass last year. Um, so that'll prevent robbing, nothing can get in there. So I'm going to put the number eight hardware cloth on the inside. Okay, what I did here is I've got two of them built. I'm only building four, I've got five. I've got five from last year that I built. I'm just going to build four more. Uh, this is what it looks like when it's done. Obviously the holes aren't drilled yet. So I've got my wood already cut. I've got my wood pre-cut. I'm just using this as kind of like a, like a stand here. You can see this. But you, all you got to do is take your hives, just measure your hives, just measure your sizes. Um, build your boxes that way. This is like really easy. If you go and buy yourself a 12-foot piece. This is a 1 by 8. You don't have to build a 1 by 8. That's just what I'm doing. It just gives it more, just gives there just more space in there. Let some of that heat escape. But if you buy a 1 by 12, or 1 by 8 by 12, that will build you two of these boxes. So a 12-foot board will build you two boxes. And I'm doing the same thing with my, uh, see them back here. I'm getting ready to build my deeps. So I'll do, I'll finish, I'll, I'll do the video on that so you guys can see that. I got my supers I got to build. They're sitting right there. Uh, so I'm just kind of going one step at a time here. Um, I just got done building uh, top feeders, top feeder frames. I did a video on that. For I use the hive top feeders. Um, and actually a hive top feeder would sit right on top of this actually if I, if I was using the feeder. Two deeps, ventilation box, type hive top feeder on top of that if I was doing that. So you can put these things anywhere you want. It, it just works really nice because it lets some of that some of the heat escape. So all I do, I got these boards pre-cut. I use this Tidal Bond Premium Glue. This is really nice glue. You can see this here. This is really nice. Actually, let me turn my light on here. Hold on. This is live theater, people. Live theater. There we go. See that Tidal? <clears throat> this is really nice. This, this glue holds really well. And it's waterproof, weatherproof, so this does a nice job. Real simple. Open it, open it put a bead of glue. Like that. 
I like to have one corner when you buy, unless you buy the quality, quality lumber, which is perfectly, perfectly cut. I buy the standard lumber, which works just as good. It's half the price, but I want to have at least one side, whether it's this side. Here, I'll do it this way so you guys can see it here. I just make sure that's perfectly flush on here and here. And if there are if there are any gaps, the bees will propolize it anyways. Tack. I'll go all the way in with it until you're ready to turn this around. Do the other side. side here. Actually this side's facing me now. Oh, let me do one of these boards up. I just use this thing to help hold it up. You don't have to, it just works a little nicer. Do it like this. I actually did build a jig for this kind of thing to hold it all straight. I just haven't used it. I suppose I should. Make sure that's flush, flush. This nail actually went in crooked, which happens sometimes. Just straighten that nail out. Let's get a different one. You can pre-drill your holes. I don't mind pre-drilling sometimes. You pre-drill them. Only problem with pre-drilling, obviously you get your nail in nice and straight, but you don't get the same bite as if you were just driving it in straight. So here, here, drive it all the way down. Flip it over, we'll get this out of the way. And my, my perfectly flush side is right there. Like I said, this is, this is what they call standard lumber. Standard lumber can be off just a hair on width when they cut it. If you buy the premium, which is like a double the price, um, you won't have that. But this works just as well. I've got a, if you've got a miter box, that works out really nice. You get your, you get your cuts perfectly straight. Let's get this glued. Be the glue here. See how easy this is? And you can save yourself a whole bunch of money, especially when you got a bunch of hives. You know, if you got one or two hives, okay, fine. But if you've got a bunch, and I like building stuff, I got the tools. Just make sure I'm flush on here. The reason, okay, put that there. You got knot, you have knots in the wood to deal with too, so I'm not putting a nail right here on the end of this because there's a, I'll show you here, hold on. There's a knot right there, so let's get this flush right there. It's nice to pre-start your nails, and all you can do is pop them in. Make sure it's flush there. Drive it down. Don't hammer all the way in until you're you know you're right on the money. Because sometimes a nail will go and crooked like that last one did, then you gotta pull them out. And if you hammer it all the way down, then you gotta pop the board out. There's a knot right here. Don't try and don't try and hammer through that knot. You try and drill, hammer through that knot, you're going to split your wood. If you pre-drill it, you can. But like I said, I don't, I don't like to pre-drill them. It takes away some of the strength, some of the bite. Um, and this pine is so soft. Um, I can't remember what size nail these are. What nails these are? Um, they're about an inch and about almost two inches long. And they work out really nice in this pine. I can't remember the size, but you could go to any hardware store, Menards, Lowe's, whatever. I do Menards. Um, and you can get these nails. And that's it. I'm going to put, I am going to put three nails on each side. Flip it over. Two more nails. Boom. And... Okay. All right, next, let me go find my. I'm gonna go find my drill bit. It's somewhere here. I won't leave the camera running while I'm trying to find a bit. But one tip you want to do when you're drilling these holes, because this box, when this was meant to sit this way on top the hive, you probably can't see it on the camera. But these holes are drilled at an angle down, so if it rains, the water can't go in your hives because obviously water and bees don't mix. Um, 
So these are drilled on an angle. They don't have to be. They don't have to be any specific angle. Uh, just, just put them. Just tip. I'll, actually, I'm going to show you. I got to go find my bit, and I will show you. But these holes are drilled on an angle, so the water can't go in. Obviously, if you had this up like this, and you had a flat roof on here, when it rained, the water could hit. It could hit the top of that hole. It could run in your hive. So, and what I do, obviously, I know this one's the top, or this is the top because these holes are down here. But what I'm going to do on these other boxes, I'm going to draw an arrow just so when you're looking at it quickly, because when these holes are in the middle, then you got to try and see which which angle, which side the hole is pointing down. I'm just going to put an arrow on the inside. Kind of see I did here. Let's see this or not? See there's an arrow in there. That means that's the top, and that's also the top because it's perfectly flush right here. Um, so. I'm going to drill, I'm going to put an arrow on this way I know which way top is, and then those holes, like I said, will be pointing down. So let me go find my drill bit, and uh, we will do the next step. I found it. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. What I use here, this is a, and you don't have to go with this exact size bit. I believe this one is, I can't read it, it's all scuffed up. This is probably like an inch and a quarter, inch and three quarter hole. It doesn't really matter what size you do, what size you use, as uh, long as you put the vent holes in there. Okay, I want to clarify one thing. I'm, you know, I'm saying you want to drill the holes down, but when you drill the hole in the box, you want to put the bit in. Uh, well, real quick, what I did. These boxes are like 20, let's say 20 and a quarter long. They're actually a little bit shorter than that. Whoever we'll come up with this idea of not making these boxes an exact number, width and length, I'm not quite sure. They're they're just an odd <clears throat> they're an odd number. I don't know why they came out that why why they couldn't just make them 20 by 16 or whatever, but they have them. I want to say this was what 20 and on the outside it was like 20 and 3 16 or something like that. But anyways, um, I went five inches on the long side. I went five inches, five inches. I went every five inches, and I went four inches down. I pretty much just centered it and spaced it out. It doesn't have to be that exact. This is not rocket science here. Uh, but when you drill the hole, as I said, you want the hole pointing down. Yeah, but when you drill the hole, put your bit in, start it, and you want to tip the drill back towards you. So you're drilling. drilling on an angle up, which puts the hole down. I had to rethink what I said there for a minute. And there's your hole. See? There it is. Now, if it rains, the water can hit that and run straight down. Now, the only problem with using a hole saw, let me get a screwdriver. Hold on. When you use these hole saws, they work really nice. I love these, I love these saws. But you got to push out the centerpiece because when you cut it, it's going to stick in there. Okay, you got to pop that out. So I'm going to go down the line here. Like I said, you can see here. I'll show you here. I'm going to start again. Go right in the middle. Uh, let's make sure I'm doing it right. This is up. I got my arrow drawn in my box here. This is up. <laughs> Make sure I do it the correct way. Put the bit right there. Let's see it. Start the bite. Just tip the drill back. You can see the angle the drill is on. That's all it's got to be. Sometimes, yeah, see it still. Even if you try and get it to. It's still stuck in there. You gotta pull them out. If you're going straight, if you're going straight through a piece of wood, you go halfway through, go the other way halfway through, then the then this piece won't get stuck inside. One more. Start your hole. Put the drill back. If 
sometimes when you're drilling, you gotta you gotta back your saw up just a little bit. And there are your three vent holes, and you can space these any way you want. I just did it that way. Let's do it. Let's see what the side looks like here. Make sure we're pointing up. Make the mark. Tip your drill. That's it. This pine is nice. When you get these bits, you buy these bits brand new and use them for a specific thing, they stay nice and sharp. Cuts like butter. So, uh, I'll just keep going here. I gotta get these pieces out of here. One thing that stinks about using these, saw, these hole saws is these pieces stick. Up a battery drill, <clears throat> these work really good. Okay, well, you guys kind of got the idea here. So, there's, there's your side of your box, there's a long side, there's your short side. So, uh, if I got one handy, hold on. I got one back here, I'll show you. Well, let's use one of these. Uh, here's the deep box. There's no frames in it, obviously. There's your deep. That's right on. Boom. There you go. Put your box on. Sure, it's lined up. And you're good. See? Now your bee's got all kinds of ventilation. And this one, yeah. Oh, there you go. Yep. Now you got all kinds of ventilation. There. Then you can put your super on top of that. Uh, put your super on top of that. All kinds of air. So the last thing I'm going to do is I've got number eight hardware cloth. And it's kind of hard to find this in stores actually. But you can go on eBay and buy this. Just type in number eight hardware cloth on eBay. And I'm going to say you can buy like, I think I got like a 25 foot roll. I don't remember, it wasn't that expensive. But I'm just gonna take this and cut this in like little three by three squares. I got a staple gun somewhere. I'm just gonna lay it in here, take the staple here over the hole, just staple it, staple it, you're done. And that's pretty much it. There's your ventilation box. Your bees will be happy. A little bit more airflow for them in the uh, summertime. So um, I think that's it. I think I've got everything here. Like I said, just make sure you drill your holes up so the hole is coming down. I almost had to make a separate little retraction on that, but no, I was thinking the wrong way. So yeah, see now, if you look inside, you'll see these holes are pointing down. So anyway, this way your water won't go in. So that's it. Hopefully you learned something. Any questions, comments, please leave them. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel. If you do, there's a little bell next to the subscribe button. Click the bell. You'll get a, next you'll get a notification uh, next time I make a video. So until next time, YouTube, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.